Hi everyone, Don Giannetti, Lighting-Essentials.com and Project52ProSystem.com. Just a little riff today on gear. Um, I was asked, what kind of gear do I need to get started? How much do I have to spend to get started? And of course, that begs a question right there. The question being, what do you want to do with your photography? Fashion photography or people photography is going to take one kind of equipment, still life and food, another type of equipment. Well, the photographer said they wanted to do food and still life, etc. And I'm really surprised when I said, you don't have to spend much, much over about 150 bucks initially. Let me explain my belief system here about gear. I was a photographer for a long ass time. Four decades plus. And in that time, I never had a bank loan. I never had a line of credit. I operated on cash flow. You see, I believed the words I'd say. I believed what my words meant. And if I said I can't afford it, that means I can't afford it. And it didn't mean I can't afford it. Guess what? I'll go and get a loan for it. Because in commercial photography, Things are good, and then things get slow, and then things are good, and then things get slow. And when things get slow, and you got a big-ass loan payment due at the bank, they don't care that things are slow. You're starting to pull out of your reserves. So what I did is, if I wanted something, I saved up and got it. That didn't mean I wouldn't have something in the interim to work with. All of my gear was purchased by lesser gear doing the job. Some things you got to buy. You got to have a good boom. If you don't have a good boom, it's, I'm sorry, I consider it an absolute necessity. That's, that's a necessity. But lighting for still life and tabletop, I did a little, little looking around a couple of years ago and I, I found this company online that sold these uh, you know, softbox kits with the stands and I bought one. Uh, it was really cheap. I mean, way cheap. Uh, and it also showed it. The stands were very poorly made and the soft boxes were poorly made and they went up easily. They, I set them up easily. I actually took them to a, friend's, a friend of mine and uh, we did a couple videos with them. Uh, I set them up easily, but I knew when I was putting them up that they were not going to come down without damage. Um, and, um, and she's still using them today. And that was a year and a half ago. Um, you just leave them set up. They are fluorescent, little fluorescent tube lights and all that stuff. And they work great for her video work. She's buying new lights, but she's buying new lights from these $70 lights I got on Amazon. I picked up another set just about six weeks ago because I'm going to be working on the, a, uh, a little video slash photography course. And I needed some inexpensive, cheap lights to work here in the kitchen. I also wanted to do it to show that being a good photographer doesn't mean you have to have brown colors or pro photos or any of those things. It just means you have to understand light and any light will do. Uh, I'm very pleased with these things. I'm going to show them to you in, in just a moment. And I'm going to show you some results that they give as well. And there are they perfect? No, no. $119 free shipping. Perfect? I don't think so. Are they doable? Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't have to put off your photography, portfolio making, building, shooting, amassing a body of work. You don't have to put that off because you can't afford a $3,000 or $4,000 lighting system. That's crazy. I mean, it really is crazy. There's, you know, you could use natural light before you even go and spend $119 on these bad boys. But it's a mindset that photographers get that they've got to have the best going out the gate. I thought always from the beginning, I would have what worked and that would get me better and better would get me best. Okay. I had a, a, a little set of Ascor lights that I saved up my pennies and got, they were on sale down at a camera store that's no longer with us. Uh, those Ascor lights put enough money in the bank that I had money to buy a good set of Normans. I, and I ended up with four packs and, or five packs and 10 heads, 10 heads or 16 heads? 
16 heads, ten, uh, five packs and 16 heads because of the money I was making with the first pack and four heads. And that got me another pack. And then that got me another pack and four heads. And then it got me another pack until I had what I, I needed to do the large set photography, which I promptly stopped doing. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes our brains are wired for like, Neh. anyway, um, well, not promptly, but it, it was a long time from the time I got my fifth pack and, uh, last head, I probably shot big studio set stuff, maybe another year, year and a half. Uh, and then, uh, got a different bug, went a different way. Um, but see that, that got me all of that. And then of course the Normans, ended up putting me in a position where I could buy pro photos. Um, the gear gets the gig and gets the job done, and then you move up to better gear. Does that mean you buy crap? No, it means you buy smart. You know, um, a 24 to one, uh, 105 Canon or 24 to 120 Nikon is a lens that, that if that's the only lens you can afford, buy it. Buy the best, buy it, because you've got 24, 28, 35, 50, 70, 85, 105, 120, 135, all built in that one lens. There's a lot of photographers who shoot out there who probably don't go beyond wider than 24 or longer than 85 or 100. So, you know, think it through. Depends on the kind of work you're going to do. You want to carry a around a bag of lenses so you can look cool, or do you want to carry around the, the lens or two that gets the job done? If you're an architectural shooter, you need a tilt shift. It's not a toy. You need a tilt shift. Do you need a 51.2? No, you need a tilt shift. Anyway, enough of that shit. Anyway, I, I really uh, uh, like these lights. I'm going to go in and set them up. Uh, for this little food demonstration, and then I will uh, show you them, uh, tell you what I like about them, tell you what I don't like about them. It's not a gear purchase that, um, you know, is going to drive a lot of people crazy. I don't think anybody's going to watch this video and go, oh my God. Uh, but it's pretty cool stuff, and it gets the job done, and uh, we're going to have fun doing it. So I'm going to go uh, in the kitchen now and start setting the lights up. Well, this is a little set. I've got uh, six tiles set up here. On the uh, on the kitchen counter we're going to uh, go and get the lights right now as you can see the light from the overhead here is just abysmal we're gonna really fix that with uh, these little lights I got so I'm gonna get those and get those set up now too okay these are the lights that I'm using these little uh, I think they're called Lumi what's it called Lumi studio okay this was hundred and nineteen dollars free shipping from Amazon and we got the little soft light and of course I'm lighting it with the other light. I haven't set up the third light yet because I don't need it. I, I want to wait and set it up for when I do. So you got two sets of lights that you just turn on. So you've got one set of two and then you turn on the second one. You got two sets of two. So you got to add a stop to the soft box or you can take a stop down. That's it. That's pretty much all they have. Uh, but they're pretty clever. They don't get hot. The soft box itself goes together really easy we got a scrim on the front as you can see um and it's uh you know pretty dirt cheap lighting let's find out how well it works well, as you can see i don't know if you can read this yeah you can iso 100 5.6 with these two lights that's iso 100 um is that a whole great deal of light no it's not but it's certainly manageable because I can go shutter speeds uh, longer. This food isn't moving. The tomatoes are not hopping around. So I can certainly go shutter speeds faster than a 80th of a second here that we have. So ISO 100, 80th of a second, 5.6. Go down to a 40th of a second. I got F8, 20th of a second. I got F11. I got all the depth of field I need with manageable shutter speeds on a tripod. This is tabletop work. That's what we're using is a tripod. Okay, this is the shot of the tomatoes with the backlight uh, only. We can see how it's set up here. Got the two lights right next to each other to give me a big faux window, which I can use obviously at any time, day and night. So you can see the sharpness throughout the tomatoes. They're looking pretty good. And the um, 
overall uh, color looks good. We're going to put in a, a fill card. And here we are putting the fill card in here just like this. We're going to fill in the front of that, those tomatoes, with this uh, foam core and see what we get that way. And you can see the fill card here. This is the shot we did with the fill card. See the color looks good, the light looks really nice. And these are unscrimmed, by the way. Uh, my, my plan to use them is, of course, create a scrim the same size as the two of them together, one scrim. That'll sit about uh, six or eight inches in front of them and give me a better, more diffused light. But these are definitely doable. Let's try one from the side, shall we? As you can see in the side light, it worked out pretty well, pretty clean. I'm going to put something to block the light just at the top of the frame and just at the, the bottom of the frame for this next shot. But see how pretty the light is coming from the side? It's gorgeous. All right, here's the shot we're going to do now. We're going to put these two um, uh, translucent uh, bottles of water here. We're going to knock the light off just a little bit and create a more of a path for the light to come in for the tomatoes. So let's see what that looks like. Well, you can see that the uh, translucent bottles added just a little bit of shadow on the top and on the bottom and kind of frame those tomatoes pretty nice. I'm going to add a light to the top now. And you can see that right here. We're just putting a white card up sitting on top of the uh, two soft uh, soft lights and then leaning back against this board back here. So we're going to take a shot and see what this sort of semi-tent thing looks like. As you can see, the, um, the tent really opens up the tomatoes, uh, gives us good highlights all the way around. It's very open, airy, very clean. The color looks good. I have done no color manipulation on these images. Uh, in fact, I'm doing no Photoshop at all, putting them right into Lightroom, moving them right straight over into Photoshop, making the JPEG, sticking them up on the movie. So uh, I haven't done anything to them. I will do one here at the end of the, uh, of the video showing you what I, I could do with the images. Okay, we've got the garlic. We've removed the uh, light from the side so I can get some shadow on these white garlics. So we're going to shoot it here on the Nikon and see what we uh, come up with. And the garlic looks pretty good. Hey, listen, thanks a lot, everybody, for coming along. I'm going to put up this uh, tomato shot that I did a little extra uh, Photoshop on it. Not very much, not more than about three minutes of Photoshop. Uh, and as you can see, these lights, while not expensive, not going to break the bank. In fact, they're darn near throwaways, you know. Uh, but they can get you working when the sun's not out or when it's late at night or when it's raining outside or what have you, you can set up a little place, get to work. I'm going to show you how to make a scrim in an upcoming video not long from now uh, to actually soften the light a little bit more and also show you how to use the boom light. But if you're interested in the lights, there's going to be a link down below over to the Amazon uh, page and a couple of different ones there that Amazon has. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Uh, it's not meant to be a, a lighting demonstration. It's meant to base, be basically, hey, these are some pretty good ways for you to jump in and start doing tabletop still life, etc. See you next time. Have a great time with your photography and subscribe. It's over there, I think. <laughs>